All right, guys, welcome back. We're going to be talking today in lesson three, the different theories for acids and bases. So again, you guys should be reviewing in these different topics and chapters from the books that you guys own. And this is what we are covering today. bronson lowry acid bases, conjugate acid base pairs, Lewis acid bases, and comparing the Arrhenius theory, bronson lowry theory, and the Lewis theory. It seems like a lot, but these three theories all together make up what we know as acids and bases. So brownstone lowry theory states that when you have an acid, it's going to be a hydrogen ion donor, which means it's going to release a hydrogen ion when it dissociates in the water. Bases are hydrogen ion acceptors, which means that they're going to absorb the hydrogen ion that's in the water. To identify these guys, all you have to do is just look at the formula. Notice what your reactants are, then notice what your products are, and the changes that you see will identify which is going to be your bronston lowry uh, acid and which one is going to be your bronston lowry base. So let's try this example. So the very first step is look at your reactants. So as you can see, water has two hydrogens and um, the NH3 has three hydrogens. Okay. The second thing you have to do is now look at your products and whatever the products are or how they have changed, those reactants are going to be classified as your bronston lowry acid or your bronston lowry base. So compare the H2O to the OH and compare the NH3 to the NH4. What happened? Did it accept hydrogen or did it release a hydrogen? So when we look, our water is going to be called the bronston lowry acid. Why? Because it gives up its hydrogen ion. The ammonia is a bronston lowry base because you'll notice it accepted another hydrogen. Here's your ammonium ion. You'll notice it accepted that hydrogen ion to make NH4. And we notice our H2O broke down and made OH minus, which is a hydroxide ion. Also, both these are found in table E. And your hydroxide ion is the reason why the solution is basic. So we're going to try another one. We're going to look at the reactants again first and then compare them to their products. And I notice you guys are saying to yourself, oh boy, charges, but the charges really don't matter. All that you have to do is identify who is gaining or losing that hydrogen ion. And it, again, compare the reactant to the product. So we're noticing that our bicarbonate ion, which is found on table E, is going to be giving up a hydrogen ion. You'll notice that because you have CO3 minus 2 all the way on the far right-hand side. It lost that hydrogen ion. The H2O is going to be the bronson lowry base because it is accepting the hydrogen ion. Thus, your hydronium ion, making the entire solution acidic, and your carbonate ion, which is again found on table E. So all we're doing, guys, is identifying who is giving up a hydrogen ion and who is accepting that hydrogen ion. That is all you need to do for the bronston lowry theory. Yeah, and then the solution is considered acidic or basic depending on the products. So again, guys, we'll be using the word proton, okay? Proton, again, is just to represent your hydrogen ion. So in the bronston lowry theory, we have these things called conjugate pairs. And a conjugate pair is the two substances that are related by the loss or gain of that single hydrogen ion. So we noticed before when we were just identifying who is the bronston lowry base, who is the bronston lowry acid, the thing it turns into is its conjugate pair. So a conjugate acid is the particle that is formed, that's the product, when the base gains a hydrogen ion. We also see our conjugate base, which is when the particle that remains when the acid donated the hydrogen ion. Okay, so when you remove a proton from a bronson lowry acid to get its conjugate base, and then again, you're going to add a proton to a bronson lowry base to get its conjugate acid. So here's a, a list of some acids and wait, wait, bases. Wait, what do, you, what do you mean by proton? Oh, right. We're talking about the hydrogen ion. Oh, hydrogen ions. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Um, so again, look at the list. You'll notice on the left-hand side, you have a list of acids. And on the right-hand side, it's a list of their conjugate bases or vice versa. You can call the left side conjugate acid to the right side being a base. So I'm noticing that the acid like HCl mm -hmm. turns into a base because it loses a hydrogen ion? Yep. Oh. Bronson lowry acids are losers. Gotcha. Losers. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
All right, guys, looking at this formula, we have to first identify which one is going to be our acid and base. And we're noticing that the water is going to be our acid because it gives up a hydrogen ion, while the NH3 is going to be our base because it is accepting it. So using the arrows now, we see that these are our changes. We're noticing that the NH3 is converting itself into NH4, so it's gaining that hydrogen ion, making that your conjugate acid. And these arrows can also help you to identify which one was originally the bronsonari acid and base because you can compare them to their products. Mm -hmm. A bronsonari base, its conjugate is an acid, while a bronsonari acid, its conjugate will be a base. Correct. Thus, for the base, we have our OH minus ion. And again, notice that the acid has one more hydrogen ion than the base, than its conjugate base. Again, let's try this problem. Now we have hydrochloric acid plus water giving you hydronium and a chloride ion. Pause the video, try it on your own. So we're noticing that our hydrochloric acid gives up a uh, proton. We're noticing that that water accepts a proton. Therefore, when you're looking at the changes and how they occur, we can say that our conjugate acid is going to be H3O because it gained a hydrogen ion. And our conjugate base, the thing that lost the hydrogen ion, is going to be our chloride ion. Is this solution acidic or basic? Hmm, good question. Well, if you look at your products, what's the only thing showing that it's an acid? That would be your H3O, so I think it's an acidic, acidic solution. Okay, so finally we're on Lewis acid base theory, the last of the theories. Lewis acids are compounds or ionic species that accept an electron pair from a donor compound. A base is one that donates the pair of electrons to an electron acceptor. So we're now looking at ions, positively and negatively charged ions. And if you also remember, Lewis is the guy who did the Lewis dot diagram, so he's going to be using those electrons in the dot diagram to really explain what's going on here. Mm -hmm. So noticing our electron acceptor, something that wants the electrons, is going to be positively charged because it has less electrons than a neutral atom. Our electron donor has more electrons, giving it a negative charge because it has more electrons than neutral. But when your deficit and your surplus come together, you'll notice that we have the sharing of the electrons to satisfy our octet rules, which we also call a coordinate covalent bond. So in summary, when we were talking before about Arrhenius, his rule was that acids will make H plus protons or H3O ions in water and bases make hydroxides. We also noticed that Bronson and Lori, when they talked about acids, they were proton or hydrogen ion donors, while their bases were proton or hydrogen ion acceptors. And Lewis's theory was that acids are electron pair acceptors and bases are electron pair donors. It would be great if you guys also copy down this chart into your notes. I want to see sketches of the people. Preferably. Lots of good sketches, maybe like a cartoon. Yeah. Flip, little flipbook animation. Oh, that'd be amazing. How Bronston let, met Laurie. <laughs> Alright, guys, so in our lesson today, we talked about the differences between the Bronston Laurie theory and the Lewis theory, and we also compared all three of them together. So, hopefully, you guys will have lots of questions to ask, and we will talk to you guys soon. I have one question. What's that? We didn't talk about why Bronson has a weird O in his name. How come? Why does he have that? No clue, that's Oh. Maybe he's Swedish, like Arrhenius. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. If anyone finds that out, let us know, and you get extra points. Well, boy. Not really extra points. Though.